Okay, here's another YouTube video for all of my amazing fans out there and because I'm sitting around and I have apparently not much to do. Um, my sleep schedule during this lockdown apparently, not that I lock myself down, I'm outside every fucking day, but my sleep schedule apparently is to somehow fall asleep 6, 7, 8 in the morning, wake up 12 to 2, then fall asleep 8, 9 at night, wake up 11 to 12. And so I like fall asleep and wake up like twice a day. And then I'm up in the middle of the night and I was writing some pages for my website about masks and how fucking stupid they are. But I'm trying to write like professional stuff. So I'm, you know, writing for my naturopathic website about that. And, you know, when it comes to sharing ideas about all this craziness going on. I don't want to be repetitive. I don't want to post something up that's obvious that everyone else is saying. Like, obviously, there is no fucking pandemic. Obviously, this is a plan by people like Bill Gates and Fauci to destroy the economy and, you know, usher in whatever James Bond villain dystopian nightmare they have. Obviously, this lockdown is going to kill easily hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people in the United States alone. It's just going to take a little while for the um, deaths to increase. Obviously, it's causing a lot of anxiety and depression. Like, I mean, what am I doing up this this time of night? You know, there's only so much I can do in terms of writing, in terms of speed stuck in this room. So I am doing more bass guitar stuff. I have my bass, I have my guitar, this is my guitar, but not that I'm a great guitarist, I'm actually a better bassist. So I'm sitting around hitting this, and, you know, it's going through, is like, what other core issues are there going on that maybe other people aren't talking about? Because, you know, at this point, if, if someone believes that there's a pandemic, then, then you know, I don't know what to say to them. You know, there, there obviously has to be something wrong with you, or is there something wrong with me? So then this leads to the issue of um, conformity, doing things because everyone else is doing it, believing something because everyone else believes it. And it's like, is there something wrong with me? Because um, I really don't care what the news says. I don't care what other people say. If I see people walk around with masks and doing stupid rituals, you know, I just don't give a fuck, and it, I find it disgusting and repulsive, and I don't want to take any part of it. But, you know, going back to school, I was, you know, bullied for my whole childhood, which besides causing PTSD, it's kind of like, did I ever learn my lesson from the, um, you know, punishment for failing to socially conform? Apparently not. Like, like, no matter what the group is doing or society is doing around me, what is it why I can't just be like, okay, I'll conform and go along with everyone else because I'm a fucking idiot. What, what is it that makes me like, like, no, absolutely not. I'm going to go do my own thing. So, of course, end up as being the naturopathic doctor trying to do my own thing, working for myself because I don't want no fucking boss to tell me what to do. But do people feel good when they watch TV and, and then they see people doing some stupid rituals and then they go out and they follow along with, with the same rituals. Like, does that make people happy? Like, why would you do that? I just, my natural inclination would be if everyone else is doing something, I want to do the complete opposite. Not that I want to sit around and do the same fucking thing. It's so, and you kind of wonder, like, how do people like this exist? And I know that there are other people who are not interested in conforming with the status quo because you can meet them online, but it's much, much harder to meet anyone like that in real life. And even if you do meet someone like that in real life, it doesn't mean that you really have a comrade in arms because they're out doing their own, own, say, their own thing, which sometimes might just be totally crazy as far as I can tell. But it, it's sort of like throughout history, do you just have these people end up getting killed because they don't want to go along with the group? Because it seems that someone would be much happier 
watching TV, watching the fear mongering and believing that there's actually a pandemic out there and, and, and being scared. Then you, you know, you're part of the group and you feel that there's a rationality with society. You feel like there's a rationality with our leaders. You feel like someone is in control. So of course they're going to take care of you. But if you don't have this inclination to conform, if you don't want to believe that everything's going to work out, then, then you just go fucking nuts because this is insane. You, you know, on Facebook, you know, obviously I know other naturopathic doctors and they'll post like these platitudes about how, you know, this is an opportunity for the world to improve or whatever. It's like there, there is no reality to that whatsoever. Or, you know, just... Another way that I don't want to go along with the status quo is the way I see my field, which I know has to be hurting a lot. There has to be a lot of naturopathic doctors not making money right now. You know, looking at um, Gerald Suntley and Trent's forecast, he went over just um, not naturopathic doctors, but medical doctors and how they don't have patients and they're laying off you know, people who are working for them. So what my field as a whole is doing is instead of saying the obvious truth that this is bullshit, you know, because like a hundred years ago, naturopathic doctors were rebels. Today, naturopathic doctors, they just want to be, you know, part of the system. They're coming up with ways to market how to protect yourself against the virus, how to boost your immune system or whatever bullshit like this. And, and I'm like, no, I would never, ever take this, Media hysteria fear mongering that's going to kill hundreds of thousands of millions of people and jump on board with it because I think I'm going to make a buck, which is what they're doing. And but it's like, what is it with me that I, I look at this and say, no, I'm not going to do it because, you know, right now, naturopathic doctors are looking for a way to make money through this. Not that there's anything unique about that. I'm sure people in all sorts of fields are saying, how are we going to make money now? That reality is you know, doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, and I'm not you going to use the, the, the phrase I'm even going to say, but, you know, Gerald Salenti says this is the new abnormal, and someone has to be really fucked in the head to go along with this shit. So the other thing that I'm thinking, besides the social conformity thing and how do people like me even exist and where we probably just get killed off throughout history, but... Um, it's not like we need to reproduce to reproduce ourselves because just randomly there's probably something in human genetics where a certain amount of people are just going to be like, fuck, I'm not going to go along with this. And I think in order to have a functional society, you need to have, or, or to, in order to have a functional society in most cases, you need to basically, most people conform it. So they're just going to go along with the system. And, but you need a handful of rebels who are going to be like, no, this sucks, this sucks, that sucks. And most of the time, those rebels are just going to be either ignored or killed. But every once in a while, they're going to point things out and help society go in the right direction. So we kind of need those rebels. Anyway, the other thing I think about is what's the best way to murder a tyrant? You know, there's the classical way where you get the crowd with the pitchforks. And, and you kill the tyrant with the pitchforks. But the problem with that is I just imagine if you have a giant pitchfork that it's going to get stuck in someone and it's and, and then it's just, just going to be kind of hard to wield. Like if someone like a governor, for example, was in front of you, um, would it really be fun to ram a pitchfork through that person? Of course, a spear might be a little more practical, but we can look at other methods of execution. There is hanging, which is a bit of a painful death. And, and this is the other thing. If you want to execute a tyrant, is it important for it to be a painful death? Like, do you want to punish the person or do you just want them dead? Because, you know, a, a firing squad, that, that's a pretty... Um, you know, relatively painless way of killing someone. You know, supposedly the guillotine was created as a more humane way of executions before we had, um, you know, the, the 
um, electric chair, which I think was also to be supposed to be a more humane way of execution. Well, I don't think an electric chair is a good way to execute a tyrant because, you know, it's in an enclosed space. Not everyone can see it. The guillotine, you know, it's just too French Revolution. Like, I go do your your own fucking thing, and, and there's too much of the guillotine that makes you think that then we're going to have, you know, our realm of terror and that we're going to go after everyone else. When the idea is we just want to kill that one tyrant. Um, hanging, like, you can imagine you make a sign that says tyrant, hang around the person's neck and then hang it. So, in a certain sense, a method of execution where you can label the tyrant as a tyrant, like, that's good. Uh, so, you want this to be public enough. Um, I, I mean, I'm not sure what else does the criteria. It should be public enough, but it would also be something that a mob could do. Because in terms of the tyrant's execution, that might not be that you're in a position of power. It might be that you're part of a mob who is not in power and you only have limited time and space to kill the tyrant as you want to do in a public way. So hanging someone that, you, you know, you need, you need the, the billets and everything. You need a whole apparatus. You need the rope. You know, it's actually a pretty nasty way to die also. Now, it's not like you're crucifying someone. You see, I wouldn't want to go all the way to like crucifixion or something like that because that's just too over the top. Like, well, once you crucify someone or, you know, like what they did in England with the hanging, drawing, and quartering and all that, that's just a little bit too medieval. You know, if you want to execute a tyrant and bring in a new age... <laughs> Not that that's really how you do it. You just don't want to go too over the top with um, the, the the medieval stuff. So, I, but the thing about like a firing squad where you just get a gun and shoot someone is that's not really that personal. So, a more personal way of doing it, a way that a crowd could do it, would just be to surround someone as a mob and kill them. Ideally with um, knives. You can do like, like the Caesar or the Jon Snow execution. Where it's like, you know, you are a tyrant, you know, whatever for Rome, for, for the watch, or for New York State. And and if a, just a bunch of people did that, then that's sending a statement. Because you can kind of tell someone while you're killing them, I am doing this because of... And, and that would be, like, the best public execution of a tyrant. And, you know, I guess it's probably not the most fun way to die, but you don't want to really worry about the person you're executing. See, see this is why I would be really bad at an execution and why I would be, wouldn't be capable of doing this is I would just have too much empathy for the person I wanted to execute. Like, even if leading up to the execution, I wanted to kill them. But then at the actual point of execution, I, I, I don't think I would have it in me. And the other thing is, once there's a mob that wants to execute someone, because I just want to rebel against the mob, I don't, all of a sudden, I, want to, I wouldn't want to take part of the mob. And I would start philosophizing about if this is really going to lead to something constructive. Like, do you create a better world through um, murdering people? Probably not. But if we were to have a mob, and we were to have a tyrant, and we were to get rid of the tyrant, I think a mob surrounding the person with not, and each person has a knife, and each person goes up to the tyrant and says, this is for whatever, and plunges it into them, that, that's, that's the statement. Because you're making the statement to the person you're killing, you're making the statement to everyone else, you're leaving a bit of a bloody mess, like this is what happens. Uh, it, there's a bit of a uniqueness to it, and it's like this is an event, like, you, you know, they're shooting someone, anyone could get shot. But it takes someone special to be surrounded by a mob who plunges knives into them. Uh, and it's gruesome, it's not over-the-top gruesome like um, some other medieval things, you're not putting them in the Iron Maiden or, you know, whatever. Um, okay, so that's um, the, the answer to, to what I was thinking about. Uh, 
that, that that's about it. That's the I, I think I'll end the video now and um maybe I'll probably write something about group chat later in the week. My life is still kind of crazy this weekend because I have to move my offices and all this blah blah blah. And I got locked out of my new office, which is um lots of fun. Okay, so that's it. Bye.